So when we talk about interactions within the ecosystem um, of the different animals, everyone has got its own role that it plays. Just like we've got producers and consumers, and producers are where everything starts. They're at the foundation of the food chain and where most of the energy is at in producers, the plants, the trees, the things that we and other animals need to eat that can't make our own. So we've got three main types of interactions among organisms. They are competition, predation, and symbiosis. Now all three of those categories have different things taking place within them. Different animals are different things. You know, you can be prey and predator. Okay? You can be both. And here, animals can hurt each other or they can live with each other and benefit one from the other. Competition. Competition is just like sports. Okay, you're in the World Series. You're competing to be the world champions. You're competing for a trophy. You're competing to be number one. Okay, you're competing for a job. Some of you competed to get into early college. Some of you try out for things and compete to get in. You will eventually apply for a job. Applying for a job is a competition. Well, in the ecosystems, there's competition. What might there be competition for? Food? Habitat. Habitat. Where are you going to live? This is my house. You know, you can't stay here. Well, watch me. And then there ends up being an altercation. Okay? So, competition is different species can share the same habitat. Different species can also share similar food requirements. For example, lions and hyenas are both flesh eaters that live in Serengeti. They must constantly compete for limited resources, for a limited amount of food. Okay? Goes back to Darwin's theory of what? Survival of the fittest, the strongest survive. So with, if you've got a lion and a hyena fighting for something, who's most likely to win? The, who's, <laughs> Alyssa, up. Well, it depends. If they're fighting with each other, the lion's probably going to win. He's bigger and stronger. But the hyena is smaller and quicker. So it depends on what they're after. Okay? Predation. Here we come back to predator and prey. Okay? An interaction in which one organism kills and eats another is called predation. The organism that does the killing is the, the predator. The one that is killed is called the prey. We're pretty good with that. Understanding that predator kills prey. Okay? Uh, the lynx and the snowshoe hare in this picture, and then the cartoon that most of us are familiar with, Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner. That's my favorite cartoon of all time. I love the Roadrunner. Me, me. Okay. He is one aggravating bad dude. No, I did that. Me, me. Okay. But you would think that coyote would eventually get smart. But, I mean, he is dumb as a box of rocks. Okay. Uh, nowadays, that would be considered way too violent for kids. You know, they would think kids try to act this stuff out. That's what uh, activist group used to say, that, that they were too violent, that kids would watch these cartoons and try to act them out and get hurt. 
You know, and my thing was, even when I was your age, well, there must be some stupid kids, you know, to think you can drop an anvil on somebody's head and not kill them. There's a different problem other than the cartoon. Food chains. A food chain is a series of events in which one organism eats another and obtains energy. Now, a chain is different than a web. A chain is just like a chain that you would pull a car with, that you would tie your dog up to, that you would put together and hold two things. Your necklace is a chain. If you break one link in the chain, what happens? It doesn't work anymore, right? Okay? You break a necklace, a chain, your charm falls off and you lose it. The food chain is the same way. You drop one of the, pull one of the organisms out of the food chain, it disrupts everything. The first organism in a food chain is always a producer such as the grass in a field. We start from there and then insects can eat it and the birds can eat the insects or the cow can eat the grass or the horse can eat the grass or the buffalo or the deer and then we move forward. But at the bottom of every food chain is always a producer that gets this energy from the sun. The second organism is called a consumer that eats the producer and it's called a first level consumer. The first level consumer has to be an herbivore or an omnivore because producers don't eat producers, right? Now, my question is a Venus flytrap <coughs> is it a herbivore or a carnivore? Or an omnivore? Do Venus flytraps eat anything other than bugs? They have to, right? When they grow from a seed, they don't have a bug in the ground. So they are producers and they are also carnivores. They eat both, so they're omnivores. A second level consumer might eat the first level consumer, and so on and so on. The second level consumer is usually a carnivore. Second level normally eats meat. Okay? In this picture, what would happen if all the caterpillars right here died off? What would happen? The frog wouldn't have nothing to eat, would die. Then what would happen to the snake? And then what would happen to the owl? Die. It would destroy this food chain. Okay? We'd have a lot of pretty flowers, but we wouldn't have any of the other animals. Food chain or a food web. A food chain is a series of events in which one organism eats another and obtains energy. A food web consists of many overlapping food chains in an ecosystem. It's easy to forget that the food chain involves pretty much all organisms big and small in an ecosystem. There are levels. Okay, of hierarchy. Here we see a food web where there's interactions in between. Okay, this bird can eat this small thing. It can eat this fish, but this fish can also eat this, and these fish eat this, and they're intertwined. In a food web, you have a greater chance of survival if something happens to an organism than if you're in a food chain. A food web is, is more viable. It's stronger, just like a spider web. 
One, a whole spider web is stronger than one strand of the spider web. One strand is kind of like a food chain. And when you wove all those together, weave all those together, I should say, you end up with something very, very strong. Symbiosis. Okay? Symbiosis is a close relationship between two or more species wherein one of them benefits. One. Okay? It's important that we understand these vocabulary terms because you're going to be asked about relationships between organisms and you're going to be asked is it parasitism? Is it predation? Is it symbiosis? What kind of relationship is this? Okay? So you have to understand the vocabulary words. You have to understand that symbiosis is a relationship between two organisms in which one benefits. Mutualism. A relationship in which both species benefit is called mutualism. The old, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. We talked about bacteria living in our intestines. We have E. coli in our intestines, remember? Is E. coli, normally when we hear of it, we think about E. coli poisoning and it's bad for us, right? However, E. coli in our intestines, we provide it a habitat, and it in turn helps break down our food. Remember, we have more bacteria in our bodies than we have cells. All bacteria is not harmful. We have a mutual relationship with bacteria in our intestines. You have to cure. I thought you had a question. Okay. So, it's mutual. We benefit each other. At this very moment, you are participating in a mutualistic relationship. Bacteria called Escherera coli in your stomach. They help you digest foods that mammals cannot normally digest, and you give them a place to live. It's mutual. Okay? Kind of like when you go um, live with someone for room and board. You help them clean their... If you're a nanny, part of your pay if you live in their home is your room and board. You work, take care of their kids, they give you a little bit of money, they give you a room to sleep in, they provide your food and everything, and in turn you watch their kids. That is a symbiosis mutualism relationship. Right, Alyssa? Here we have some pictures of symbiosis. We've got rhinos, and this little bird, I do not remember what it's called, but this bird, you know what it gets off of the rhino? A couple of things. Well, number one, it's safety. I mean, who's going to mess with it when you're on top of this 3,000-pound behemoth? Number two, it gets food. It picks the nits and the flies and the other things that are on the rhino's skin, and that's its food source. Okay, here we've got Nemo living in seaweed or whatever that stuff is. Okay, it provides him a home. Okay, here we've got um, barnacles that are attached to the whale. Fin. Okay? They both help each other out. Okay? They both benefit from the relationship. Here's another one. Com com communalism. 
Communalism is a relationship in which one species benefit and the other species is neither helped nor harmed. Now this bird has built its nest in this cactus. Okay? Why would it do that up off of the ground, build its nest in this cactus? Skylar? Yeah, and ain't like a snake is crawling up that cactus to eat the eggs, is it? Prairie dogs, I mean, you, you know, we know that cactuses are full of needles and they hurt. So that's a very safe place for that bird to build its nest. So the bird benefits, but the cactus is neither, eh, whatever, I don't get nothing out of this. Doesn't really get anything. So... Commensalism, one benefits. Mutualism, both benefit. It is the least common type of symbiosis. Red-tailed hawk can build a nest in a cactus. The hawk gets shelter, but the cactus gets no benefit. Parasitism. Parasitism sounds like what? Parasites. Are parasites good for you? No. Anybody got any examples of parasites? I mean, what is that? A leech? What is that? A tick. Okay? Neither of which are good for whoever they latch on to, right? Parasitism involves one organism living on or inside of another organism and harming it. You get a tick, a tick bites you, is that good for you? No. Is it good for the tick? Yeah, he gets food. You get sick. Parasites can eventually do what to their host? Kill it. A virus is like a parasite, right? It kills the host cell. Okay? Speaking of which, is a virus a living thing? No. Can we use antibiotics on viruses? No. Okay. Common parasites are ticks and leeches. These parasites have adaptations that enable them to attach to their host and feed on its blood. Unlike a predator, a parasite does not usually kill the organism it feeds on, but it can. But does it want to? No, it's a free room and board. All right, now I want to go back and look at a few videos.